celebrate the Feast of St. Francis and animal blessings. One note about your animals, feel free to move around with them if you need to, go in and out as many times as is needed. Our opening hymn is on page three of your service bulletin. Please stand as you're able for the cross. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
May God be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask except through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Job. There was once a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. That man was blameless and upright, one who feared God and turned away from evil. One day, the heavenly beings came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them to present himself before the Lord. The Lord said to Satan, Where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, From going to and fro on the earth, and from walking up and down on it. The Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil. He still persists in his integrity, although you incited me against him to destroy him for no reason. Then Satan answered the Lord, skin for skin, all that people have, they will give to save their lives. But stretch out your hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, Very well, he is in your power. Only spare his life. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and inflicted loathsome sores on Job from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. Job took a potsherd with which to scrape himself and sat among the ashes. Then his wife said to him, Do you still persist in your integrity? Curse God and die. But he said to her, You speak as any foolish woman would speak. Shall we receive the good at the hand of God and not receive the bad? In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom, through him he all, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being. And he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Now God did not subject the coming world about which we are speaking to angels, but someone has testified somewhere. What are human beings that you are mindful of them or mortals that you care for them? You have made them for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned them with glory and honor, subjecting all things under their feet. Now in subjecting all things to them, God left nothing outside their control. As it is, we do not yet see everything in subjection to them, but we do see Jesus, who for a little while was made lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Some Pharisees came, and to test him they asked Jesus, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then, in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. He said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her, 
And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was, in, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. He took them up in his arms and laid his hands on them and blessed them. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable unto you, O Lord, our God. Amen. Like most Roman Catholic, Lutheran, Methodist, Congregational, and Episcopal churches, here at St. Barnabas we follow the Revised Common Lectionary. Several decades ago, these denominations got together and created a three-year cycle of Sunday morning scripture readings. Every Sunday, we hear an Old Testament reading, a psalm, a New Testament reading, and a gospel reading. The three-year cycle includes readings from across most of the Bible. This includes almost all of the four gospels. And for the last few weeks, we've been working through the gospel according to Matthew. Today's reading is one that comes up every three years, usually toward the beginning of October, but usually we don't hear it. Usually on the first Sunday of October, we switch up the readings and replace the normal readings with those for the Feast of St. Francis. The animal and pet blessings that we do this with this feast are a big hit, so we usually switch up the readings to match the pet blessings. This year we will do pet blessings, and most of our music is about animals and God's creation. However, I decided to keep the standard revised common lectionary readings, including this complicated gospel reading that we heard Susan read. In it, Jesus teaches us about marriage and divorce and adultery. And for good measure, he teaches us about receiving children. Two weeks ago, I preached about children and following Jesus down the ladder of life to embrace many childlike things that represent aspects of God. So I didn't want to preach about children again. That left me pondering about marriage and divorce. I don't think I have ever preached about divorce. There are too many landmines in the topic. First, like many of you, I am divorced. Second, the most recent data about the divorce rate is from 2019, and it shows that the rate is down, but still between 40 and 50% of marriages will end in divorce. This means that those of you that are hearing this sermon have an incredible wide range of experiences with divorce. Third, some of you have never been married, either because you didn't want to be married or you never found the right person, or maybe you're widowed. So divorce may not feel directly relevant to you. And finally, as if there weren't already enough landmines on the topic, if you're like me, that in, then divorce is one of the most painful experiences I have ever been through. 
So for some of you, hearing the topic of divorce may trigger raw memories. However, even with all of these landmines, I am going to talk about divorce for the next couple of minutes. I think the first thing for us to understand is the gospel context in which Jesus is speaking. 2,000 years ago, there was no safety net for divorced women. A man could divorce his wife for any reason or no reason at all. And this left many destitute. So when Jesus is speaking against divorce, he's speaking up for women and trying to protect women from the ravages of life. I think this is still relevant for us today. We must make sure that both parties in a divorce are cared for and not left destitute. My experience from divorce shows that personal finances get very tight in a divorce. All of a sudden you have to pay for two households, two sets of just about everything, and there are legal fees. We sometimes think that divorce is a modern event, but as our gospel reading shows us, the law of Moses allowed for divorce. The laws of Rome allowed for divorce. Divorce is not a new thing, and the financial hardships that come along with it are also not new. So Jesus is actually being very practical when he speaks against divorce. Here are a few more practical things about divorce. Abuse is a reason to leave a marriage. Abuse comes in many ways, and a person is perfectly justified in protecting him or herself from abuse or protecting kids from abuse. Also, as a gay married priest, I sometimes get asked whether a gay or lesbian person should leave their marriage to someone of the opposite gender. Throughout the centuries, there have been a lot of reasons that a gay man might marry a woman. I am a gay man who was married to a woman to the mother of my daughter. We are divorced and I am now married to a man. However, when a man comes out to me as gay and he's married to a woman, I've never been able to say, well, then you need to get divorced. Instead, it's up to the couple to decide what is the best path forward. Maybe they'll stay married. Maybe they won't. Just as there is great diversity in human beings, there, is all, there are also many types of marriage. One size does not fit all. Now, I have always been impressed with those churches that go the extra mile to help people remain married. I'm not talking about the churches that bluntly kick you out when you get divorced. Nor am I talking about the churches that make divorce a mortal sin. Divorce is not bad because it's depraved or immoral. Instead, it is an impediment to healthy spirituality because it is so painful. It is a big, gaping hole that is ripped into a life. It's the icky ending of a relationship. I define, as many of you know, I define spirituality as relationship. Relationship with God, others, and self, and the rest of non-human creation. Spirituality is relationship. And for many, your spouse or partner is the most important relationship that you will ever have with another person. Yes, for some, the most important relationship with another person is a mentor, friend, parent, child, sibling, or caregiver. But for many, your partner or spouse is the primary way that you practice healthy spirituality with another person. Marriage can be a lifelong school of love. Sometimes it takes at least a lifetime for us flawed human beings to learn how to love. God is relentless in leading us into healthy spirituality and therefore into healthy relationships with one another. And this is not always smooth sailing. A marriage will have many rebirths. Last spring, I preached a lot about order, disorder, and reorder. 
And this cycle is one that repeats itself over and over in marriage. Marriage has its ups and downs. It's through thick and thin. It's through good times and bad times. It has many times of disorder that only turn into rebirth and reorder if you stick with the marriage. Yes, sometimes divorce is the way that one can move out of disorder and into reorder. Sometimes divorce is the path of healing of the heart. But in my observation, all marriages go through the cycle of order, disorder, and reorder. In marriage, you have life, death, and resurrection built in. As an aside, there is one thing that I've noticed about a person who is about to go through a divorce. It's the belief that being single again will bring health in just a few weeks. As I said earlier, divorce is a big gaping hole that is ripped into a life. And it will take months, if not years, for that wound to heal. Divorce can be a journey to healing, but it's a long journey, not short. But again, I appreciate those churches and counselors that help a person stay with a marriage. I think we have all heard it said that money and children are the two biggest stressors in a lot of marriages. Good communication and conflict resolution skills are key to a healthy marriage and quite frankly, to a healthy life. After being together for more than 15 years, Jeff and I still go to a marriage counselor. It's only every other eight weeks, or it's only every eight weeks, and it feels more like life coaching than marriage counseling. I appreciate churches and counselors that help us as we work to keep our relationships healthy, all of our relationships. Jesus had a lot to teach us about relationships. Jesus is relentless in leading us toward healthy relationships with God, other, and self. He is tireless in showing us how the false self and the ego get in the way of our life journey. We all have ego work to do to let go of our false self. Jesus says that we all need to let go of an excessive need for affection and approval. Jesus says that we all need to let go of an excessive need for control and manage anger. And Jesus says that we all need to let go of a disproportionate need for security and manage our fears. The need for approval, control, and security, these get in the way of relationship with God and they get in the way of a marriage. Spirituality and marriage can be very intertwined with one another. Can you see how your ego might be impacting your marriage or might be impacting that other special relationship that you have? Who is that relationship for you? If it isn't anyone, then might God fulfill that need? Now, once again this week, I want to get, provide you with a spiritual practice that can help you. This week's spiritual practice has the Latin name of Stabilitas Loci. In English, this is stay in place or stay put. Staying put is exactly what it seems to mean. It means remain, don't go, persist, and be patient. We live in a society that prizes mobility. If we don't like something, then we can move on to the next thing. If we don't get what we want, then we can leave. It used to be that a person lived in a small portion of the world for their whole life. It used to be that a career was one straight path. I don't want to go to back to these things. There can be some benefit to moving on. I think this is even sometimes true with a marriage. But as in many things, a blessing is a curse. Sometimes moving on is not the best path. Perhaps the most radical thing you can do is stay where you are. The spiritual practice of staying put allows us to let go of the idea that we have an alternative. We give up the possibility of withdrawing. As wise ones know, one of the characteristic aspects of egos is that it always wants alternatives available. 
ego and false self reflect a mentality that always wants to keep an exit open. And therefore, we can never come to complete surrender and acceptance. Through the spiritual practice of stabilitas loci, we learn to confront and surrender. As an important part of the mentality of this practice, we say, this is my place, this is my situation. In this practice, we say, what I already have is what I want to work with. Or we say, I will stick with my current place and situation as it develops for better or for worse. The limitation that this practice imposes on one's ego proves to have another benefit, a flourishing of self-confidence and strength of mind to enable us to be in the situation we're in without reservations. What can seem claustrophobic or restrictive actually turns out to be vast and hospitable space. During COVID, we've all had a lot of staying put. We have found the deep inner liberations of giving up our freedom to come and go as we choose. When we can't fill up our life with outside experiences, then we must simply be with ourselves and with God. As Episcopalians, we believe that all of the Bible can be useful. So how was all of that that I just said in dealing with a teaching of Jesus that has so many landmines? Once again, I believe these teachings are because God wants the best for us. I'm convinced that God wants us to grow into the beauty that is already inside of us, ego gets in the way of healthy spirituality, just like it gets in the way of a marriage. Whichever path you take, may you have God at the center. Please stand as you are able. In the tradition of our church, let us say together the affirmation of Christian faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God. As we pray for the church and for the world, if you are joining us on Facebook, please put your own intercessions and thanksgivings in the comment section.
I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our Bishop Lucinda, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may, be, pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially Alan Fair, Tony, Alan Ross, Megs Ingham, Bruce Flesher, and Ruth Sullivan. Pray for those who have died. For Ashley Miller, for healing. For Holly Height, for healing. Alan Fisher, repose of soul. We pray for Janet Ross, for healing. We pray for Cleo, for healing. We pray for Sandra's mom, for healing. We pray for Michael, who is dying. We pray for Molly, for strength and courage. We pray for healing for Alicia. And we pray for healing for Kendra and a safe pregnancy. From Facebook Live, we ask your prayers for the repose of soul for Cliff Freeman and Marilyn Golden. We ask your prayers of healing for Joe. We ask your prayers of thanksgiving for the life of Bob Keim. We pray for the needs of those in our community, especially Cody Arnold, Denny and Francie, Becky Dominador, Jeremy, Phyllis, Lucy, Cram Brief Kilm, Sydney Stain, Bill Brown, Scott T. Dagen, Janet Ross, Alan Burge, Alexandria, Josh Berg, and Donna. Please pray for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthening you in all goodness, 
and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Please be seated for the peace. The peace of Christ be always with you. Let us safely share peace with one another while safely seated. And if you're on Facebook Live, go ahead and put the word peace or some other appropriate word in there as well. Also on Facebook Live, if you have a birthday, anniversary, travel, or other celebration, go ahead and that, put that in the comment section so that we can pray for it. Good morning. I'm Rob Dirksen, your vestry on call person today. Just a couple announcements. You may have noticed yellow tape is mostly gone. Um, so we are sort of counting on you to sort of figure out your spacing, to figure out what's going to work best space-wise. So imagine a bubble around you and st try to stagger yourselves so that we have the most space. Um, coffee hour. We're still looking for sign-ups for coffee hour. There is a sign-up sheet in the, in the Northex, and you can email Carol if you'd like to do that. But um, um, if you want snacks afterwards, we need to sign up for that. And I do think we have coffee today, don't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Um, so we have a couple uh, things to coming up. We need some recommendations or uh, for or nominations for both the vestry and the Dyson Convention. So there are four positions available for the vestry. There will be three three-year terms and one one-year term. And for the Dyson Convention, we need five. Um, nomination. So if you would like to nominate yourself or would like to nominate someone, please let uh, us know. Um, also, there will be a memorial service this afternoon for Tony DeFazio at 3 p.m. here. And I think that, oh, oh uh, also, there is the adult ed uh, class. It's every Thursday, and we are doing Care of Creation. And there is a Zoom link. Um, it's noted here in the bulletin. And please join us. That is from 7 to 8. And we'll be talking about environmental things and how we can participate to make this world a better place. All right, thanks. Good. Thanks, Rob. Um, we'll also be celebrating Lynn's brother, Alan Ross, on Thursday morning, if you want to join for that celebration of life and death as well. We are in the last two months of this long season after Pentecost. And it means it's time to switch up our liturgy. So you may have noticed that we've already switched up a couple things. The Collect for Purity was in English rather than Spanish. We have Eucharistic, I'm sorry, we have Prayers of the People Form 2 instead of Form 1, which has those moments of silence in between. We are also about to go to these yellow booklets in a moment for our Eucharist. Um, and with that, we'll have some extra singing. Um, we'll be singing the Lord's Prayer. We'll have a fraction anthem at the end that we'll sing. When we're done with this yellow booklet, we then go back, at, and, and um, as you receive the bread and wine, we go back to the standard bu um, bulletin for the communion hymn and the rest of the service. So we are flipping between two different things this Sunday, and we will do that for the rest of this season, which ends at the end of November with Advent. Hard to believe. Any other announcements? Yes. Happy anniversary. Katie, it's nice to have you back here. We also have a birthday in the bulletin um, for uh, Thomas Wilcock, who I imagine is related to Carol. Are there any other birthdays or anniversaries? What's going on, Sergio? And you turn 10, don't you? Congratulations, 10 is a good age. Mm -hmm. And Carol, anything on Facebook Live? Yes, we have uh, Susan Murray's birthday is today, or being celebrated today. Good. So we have a birth birthday prayers and a travel prayer that we're going to do as well on page 12 of your service bulletin. First, the birthday prayers. Gracious God, who made us in your own image, we thank you for life, love, and joy. Send your blessing upon these, your children, who have completed another year. Surround them with your grace, fill them with your love, and strengthen them to be your servants in the world. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
and the anniversary prayer for Kathy and Jeremy. We thank you, gracious God, for the love you have implanted in the hearts of your servants and for your continued blessings upon them. Give them kind and loving hearts, always ready to ask forgiveness as well as to forgive. Support them through times of trial, strengthen their love for one another, and may that love empower them to be instruments of God's love in the world. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now the travel blessing. Together, O oh God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel, surround them with your loving care, protect them from every danger, and bring them in safety to their journey's end. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. To, congratulations to all those that are celebrating or traveling. Oh, and for those of you that heard my dad's name read off uh, for Repose of Soul, he died two years ago um, on September 30th, so that was not recent. Or it was recent, but it wasn't in the last little bit. And now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice to God. Invite your prayers of thanksgiving, and if you're on Facebook Live, go ahead and put your prayers of thanksgiving into the comment section, so either silently or aloud. May God be with you all. Let us sing our thanks to who God. Blessed are you, creator of the universe. From old you have led your people by night and day. 
May the light of your Christ make our darkness bright. For your word and your presence are the light of our pathways, and you are the light and life of all creation. are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. In your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God of all. Jesus stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption of God in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We're calling Jesus death, resurrection and ascension we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray.
And now back to your regular bulletin. Please stand or kneel for the post-communion prayer. Page 16. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with spiritual food in the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of Christ and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Savior, to, him, to you and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. P please be seated for our pet blessings. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and God saw everything that God had made, and behold, it was very good. Oh God, we thank you for all creatures you have made, so perfect in their kind, great animals like the elephant and the rhinoceros, humorous animals like the camel and the monkey, friendly ones like the dog and the cat, working ones like the horse and the ox, timid ones like the squirrel and the rabbit, majestic ones like the lion and the tiger, and the gentle birds with their songs. Oh Lord, give us such a love for your cre creation that love may cast out fear and all your creatures see in humans their priest and friend. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. All dogs and cats, large and small. Praise the Lord. All rabbits, hamsters, and guinea pigs. All goldfish, guppies, and swimming creatures. Praise the Lord. All robins, wrens, and singing birds. Praise the Lord. All bats, squirrels, and raccoons. Praise the Lord. All horses, cows, and sheep. Praise the Lord. All lizards, snakes, and creeping things. Praise the Lord. Every animal in the sky, the sea, and the forest. Praise the Lord. Lord, for all the animals in the whole wide world, for all the fun and friendship we have with animals, especially those who share our lives in our homes. Amen. Guide the leaders of the nations of this world that they will consider the needs of the creatures of the earth in their decision making. Lord, Comfort and heal all those animals who are ill, suffering, or without a home. Lord, we commend to you all the animals who, have who we have loved and who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. Lord, for all the times we have hurt or neglected animals, we are sorry. for all the times we have destroyed the homes of animals in the forests, oceans, or fields, we are sorry. let us pray together. God, our God, our Creator, help us to love all creatures as our kin all animals as our partners on earth, all birds as messengers of praise, all small beings as expressions of your mysterious design, and all frogs as voices of hope. Amen. The logistics for these animal blessings, if the ushers could release from the back once again those with pets that want to come, Susan will be over here, I'll be over here to do a pet blessing. Um, and we will not be using water this year because of COVID. So we'll be placing hands on your pet. Unless you tell us, we better not.
And now if we could all stand for the human blessing. Oh, and the blessing of all the animals that are on Facebook Live as well. Um, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Remembering in God's light and love, all creatures are beautiful. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. <laughs>